Just when we thought Chinese tech stocks were finally catching a break with the new Chinese stimulus plans to boost its economy, the CP hit the tech sector with more regulatory crackdowns out of nowhere. The proposed regulations mostly surrounded online gaming, and given that China's online gaming market is the biggest in the world, major tech companies in China lost enormous market share in the past few weeks, with some speculating that this crash is spilling over to the global industry. So how bad is the fallout from these regulations, and is there a chance this will wreak havoc in the gaming sector abroad? We explore that and more in today's video. Welcome back to PSD Markets. This all started earlier this month when Beijing's regulatory crackdowns came back with multiple new rules concerned with the gaming industry. These new rules are aimed at effectively limiting consumer spending on online games and reducing what state-backed media called online gaming addiction. They include online games being banned from giving players daily login rewards, rewards from spending on a game for the first time or from spending several times on a game consecutively, and a ban on tipping content creators who stream the games online for a living. Even though these new rules were just drafts, their impact was harsh and immediate. Two of China's biggest gaming companies, NetEase and Tencent, fell by nearly 30% and 17% respectively. This translated into an $80 billion reduction in the market value, which isn't surprising once you know that gaming represents about 70% of NetEase's revenue and about 30% for Tencent. The new drafts are part of the war China waged on the tech industry over the past few years. Overall, the government is seeking to exert more control on e-commerce, fintech, and other tech businesses that it has decided have become too powerful. As for the regulations on the gaming sector, China has been enforcing them as early as 2019, when the authorities first started targeting what they said was a problem of online gaming addiction among minors, setting daily time limits on gamers under 18. Those restrictions have since been tightened year over year, with regulators going from proposing rules that would require a minor mode on mobile devices to reduce screen time to delay the issuance of licenses publishers need to release new games for as long as eight months. As a result, 2022 was the most difficult year for the Chinese gaming industry, as total revenue shrank for the first time. In 2022, the total revenue of the gaming industry was 265.88 billion yuan, or $3,748 billion. This was a decrease of 10.3% from the previous year. Additionally, total revenue from the gaming industry in the first half of this year was 144.26 billion yuan, or $2,033 billion, representing a 2.4% drop compared to the same period in the previous year. Because companies that were once as large as their US counterparts were collectively losing billions of dollars in market value, Beijing revised its position last year and started approving new games again. This led regulators to focus on reducing the time and money miners spend playing online games. By now, you're probably wondering why new Chinese policies affecting Chinese companies matter to the rest of the world. What's happening in China right now is important because China completely dominates the industry. China's online gaming industry tops the rest of the world in both the number of users, 650 million last year, as well as revenue, according to research by Goldman Sachs. The announcement of the proposed rules didn't just impact the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. In fact, U.S.-listed shares of Chinese gaming companies fell as well. In addition to the U.S.-listed counterparts of NetEase and Tencent falling by nearly 22% and 13%, respectively, and its music company, Tencent Music Entertainment Group, fell by 4.5%. Mobile gaming group Billy Billy also fell by around 10%. While the decline seems limited so far to Chinese-owned companies in the U.S., the sheer size of China's gaming industry makes it possible for its problems to spill into the global gaming industry. This becomes more obvious when you look at what Chinese tech companies invest in. For example, Tencent owns 40% of US developer Epic Games, known for being the developer behind Fortnite. This company had a valuation of $32 billion in 2022. In addition to Epic Games, Tencent also owns Clash of Clans developer Supercell, and Riot Games, the developer of League of Legends and Valorant. However, Chinese netizens on X and Weibo say that the newly proposed changes in Chinese games will unlikely affect the servers American and European players use. So gamers outside of China would probably still be able to enjoy the same features even if the new regulations are enforced. The new proposals were heavily criticized by commenters on Weibo, 
China's social media platform, with one commenter calling the drafted regulations counterproductive, especially since the Chinese economy is struggling right now with a debt crisis caused by the defaults of the country's biggest real estate developers. According to China's National Press and Publication Administration, the administration will accept public and industry feedback on the new rules until the 22nd of January of next year, which gives people hope that the proposal could be changed before it takes effect. But even though the changes in the games aren't likely to become global, the position of Chinese companies on global exchanges can still be harmed, especially as China's economy suffers. Even though the new rules are limited to video games, they still serve as a reminder of the policy risk of investing in China, represented by Beijing, where regulators have more than once wiped away billions of dollars in market capitalization with rules that prioritize the government's interests and ideologies over sound economic growth. Chinese tech stocks are witnessing a hard year overall. Alibaba Group is down by nearly 38% last year thanks to China's economic slowdown, and GD.com is down by roughly 58% last year. It's not like China isn't doing anything to solve its economic problems. In fact, the Chinese government very recently announced a $140 billion stimulus package to revive key economic sectors, such as infrastructure projects and small and medium-sized enterprises. However, these economic troubles will be hard to solve with China's unpredictable regulatory approaches in the background. In other words, even though China's economy is expected to gain some momentum next year, with the IMF adjusting its 2024 GDP growth forecast for China from 4.2% to 4.6%, the country's regulations are still seen as a warning for anyone who wants to invest in Chinese stocks in the future. Many people would think that a country making efforts to reduce the amount of time and money miners spend on online games, especially those with a gacha system, which is basically the gambling of gaming, is a good thing. This is making it hard for Chinese stocks to receive any investment from foreigners or even locals since any regulatory crackdown could result in a stock losing half of its value and harming portfolios. If China wants to provide its economy and stock market with sustainable growth, then action must be taken against the regulations on tech companies in a time when Chinese shares are some of the worst performing in Asia and the entire world, with the Hang Seng Index down by 16% this year and is set for its fourth year straight of losses. China's new proposed regulations on its online gaming industry have sent the stocks of its biggest game developers and tech leaders falling massively. Investors should consider this reaction to the news carefully since the regulations haven't even been implemented yet. If they're implemented, they could cause significant changes in the global gaming space since China's online gaming market is the largest in the world. Additionally, many Chinese tech companies have large investments in global tech and gaming companies. In order to protect their interests in China and globally, these companies should send appropriate feedback to the Chinese government regarding the new regulations and work hard to lessen them before the January 22 deadline. Well, that is everything for now. What do you think? Will these new policies be implemented, or will China go back on its word after the collapse in the shares of its biggest tech companies? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.